But talk about the Money Life Manifesto and what that means to you and how we can apply that in our own life. Yeah. So um, when I was getting my website started and or kind of my brand of Coach Carson, like, what am I going to be all about? Um, I knew I wanted to teach about real estate investing and I've been teaching that for a while. But I started thinking back to that 2007 experience and, and, and I started thinking about what was the reason we actually invested in real estate. And I, I thought about that exercise my business partner and I did where we just made a list of things that really mattered to us, that were important to us. And it, it made me realize that um, I, this is kind of a tangent and I'll bring all this back together. But in the, I wrote an article called The Money Life Manifesto. And I, there's a, a story about uh, Aristotle, who's a old philo- it was a you know, philosopher in ancient Greece. And he would teach people about something called the golden mean uh, of, of, a, of a virtue. So if you want to be a good person, he would say you have to have these virtues, virtues of like courage is one of the example you would use. And but you know, courage is kind of a funny thing. Like you can have too much courage and you can go jump off a cliff without a parachute. You know, that's 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 being like foolhardy. That's being stupid. Um, you can have too little courage, though, and you can be a coward and you never do anything. You just kind of hide in a corner. But with courage, with a virtue, there's a golden mean. And that's what Aristotle taught um, in his kind of his philosophy. Well, and uh, it came to me like money is the same way is that there's this golden mean of money where, you know, I, I kind of we've all gotten there. Probably I got off the tracks a little bit, giving giving money too much importance. Um, you know, I'm going to be happy whenever I do more deals and have more money. And, you know, I tried to bring it back a little bit. We're always kind of balancing ourselves and trying to figure it out where, you know what, there's the things like relationships, there's time with your family, there's travel. Um, and so I, I, I sort of see our whole goal here as real estate investors and entrepreneurs is endlessly trying to figure out what our golden mean of money is for ourselves. You know, what, what is enough? Like when, when we reach this point where we've got enough money, enough finances, like, can we, can we say that? Can we acknowledge that? Can we know that? And that, that enough is going to be different for everybody, but that's the challenge I think of the money life manifesto is to find that intersection of, you know, money, finance, investing, and life and what you're here to do and what matters to you and what you want to contribute. And that, that contribution piece has really come to me a lot more as I've had more time to think about it is like, you know, we're, you're, you're here on earth. What, what are you going to do? You're going to contribute to your family. You're going to contribute to your, to people who are listening to your podcast. Now y'all are doing an awesome job. You're giving back, you're sharing, and that's what you're going to be remembered for. That's what your legacy is going to be is, is how much you contributed and gave. And as I've talked about that and kind of put that manifesto out there, it's been so cool because uh, there's so many different people who we have the common theme of investing in real estate and trying to achieve financial independence. But there's teachers who are working in some job that makes more money, but they really should be a teacher, but it, just, it doesn't make enough money. There's preachers, there's um, you know people who want to go on mission trips more. There's people who want to volunteer at their local charity. There's people who want to you know do housing, but they want to work in a housing market that's not going to make a lot of money, but it's going to be affordable housing for people. And it's so creative and cool to think about that, that money is kind of the first step. And then the next step that kind of you, the, from there is like, it's almost like you're, you're growing up again and get to figure out what you're going to do when you grow up. That's like the other side of financial independence is you're, you're, you're playing around with this idea of what matters to you. What can you contribute? Who's important to you? And it's a, it's an endless question, but I've had a lot of fun encouraging other people to think about that and to build a real estate investing business around that golden mean idea of, of kind of a balance and figuring it out. Yeah. And one cool thing about house hacking with that is that, you know, we hear a lot of stories as well of people eliminating their housing expense and doing exactly what you talk about, doing what matters most, right? Uh, you talk about preachers and teachers and, and you know, people that are involved with the community, maybe people traveling abroad like you did in South America for 18 months, I believe it was, um, mm-hmm. right? And all these opportunities that come up with. And on top of that, from what we've found, house hackers tend to provide maybe a higher quality level of living for their tenant, right? Because they're already mm-hmm. living there. Maybe they renovate a little bit. They have a little more thoughtfulness. Then somebody maybe lives across the country that doesn't really care, you know, treats it more as an investment, which is also fine. Um, But you're also bringing a quality product to the market for the people that you're, you know, uh, that are living with you. Um, And so it seems to be, you know, house hacking is a great way to sort of tie into that uh, money life manifesto that you talk about in the book. 